Oh, Nara. How are you? Any known faces there? You know me, I know you, kind of. They asked me to give that in the class, strategy session for anthropology. A very heavy word. Uh, uh, and, and just before walking into the class, one student was asking this, how to prepare anthropology. I didn't know what to say. Because the question seems to be not more than three or four words, but the answer may get into several years. How many of us are not acquainted, nor are not really familiar with the Telugu? Oh, good numbers. From which place here? Yeah. Karnataka? Telugu, I mean, doesn't matter, you know. One of the Bengaluru, Mysore, and... So we will start up now. So all of us have decided to be with anthropology, or we are just... on the, on the wall, the side or the side with which side to jump and finally it depends on who is pushing you to which side and somebody would push you and then on that side you would start you know, kind of swimming not knowing where to go and what we are doing how we are doing apre time chodad we have just started apre just that time today being the first session we would have a shorter one maybe perhaps about a one and a half hours or so. And so, so how many of us have finally concluded that yes, we are going to be with this subject? Or maybe I would see the other hands, I mean, put, it, put them down. Who is not really, uh, uh, not really in that confirmation? Meet Not many of you. Uh, so I'm not talking to you people. I am only talking to those people who have uh, maybe perhaps decided that we are going to study this subject. So on that note, I must uh, start uh, the day with uh, 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 maybe a warm congratulations to you. Uh, you might be wondering why I'm congratulating. Congratulations for uh, choosing something new to study. That's very important, actually. Uh, by the way, you know, before I actually start talking, though uh, you think that I have already started talking five, ten minutes ago, but then, um, uh, how many of us are engineers here? Wow. Most of you, more than 120%. And rest of you? Any, any medicos there? Any medicos? Which, which field, ma'am? Huh? Ma'am? Dentist. Oh, great. I have to see a dentist. Both of you? Dentists are the most richest fellows these days. <laughs> My own brother is a dentist who is running about three hospitals there. Though he spent six years in clearing his four-year course. That's a different thing. <laughs> Uh, settle down fast, ma, so that I can. I would want to rather uh, now start by asking people, because you have decided, most of us have decided to be with anthropology. What do you think is anthropology? I'm not asking what is anthropology, what you think is anthropology, there's a difference there. Study of man, study of human evolution, understanding what? Understanding humans and understanding culture, cultural behavior, social behavior. There's one chair there. Unda makra chair unda. There's one chair there. Understanding what? 
స్టడీ ఆఫ్ మ్యాన్ ఇన్ టైమ్ అండ్ స్పేస్ గ్రేట్ ఎలా తెలిసింది మీకు ఇంకా చదువుకోలేదు కదా యూ స్టిల్ హ్యావ్ అండ్ స్టడీడ్ ఆంథ్రపాలజీ అండ్ హౌ డు యూ నో సో మచ్ యూ ఆస్క్ మీ ఐ టెల్ యూ దాట్ యూ డోంట్ నీడ్ టు డూ ఎనీ క్లాసెస్ when you know the meaning of the subject meaning of the word it means that you have learned most of it because generally we don't teach the students in the very first class what is the meaning of anthropology we tell them only towards the end of the course so that you attend the entire course <laughs> towards the end of the course we would tell see this is what is anthropology i am really happy that you know uh, anybody who had studied anthropology in your school college or post college somewhere in your life wow look at that not a single person who must have studied anthropology but then all of us we know what it is thanks to the researches that go on before you there is so much of research you must have done not simply on anthropology several other subjects also you know half the geography you must have studied by now half of political science you have studied half of pali literature and whatever literature bengali or samiz and whatever 22 subjects you must have learned and finally you said in the alphabetical order anthropology is coming in the top of them in mean, the two other things and then said, okay fine let us go with that kind of it is not simply uh, it is not simply uh, any maybe because maybe because we have thought of studying for upsc we must have put a finger on anthropology i don't think you have done that blindfolded did you you haven't done it blindfolded see sometimes you know when we have confusion of what to do we you know close our eyes and put finger then you say okay fine we'll go with that i do that many times in my life seven ten solutions are there you don't know which solution which way to go and then you put a finger there and then you try going that side but i am sure you know most of us you know with all that wisdom we have taken this decision but then you see uh, the general crowd was you are all well read now already you are well read people in anthropology you know the meaning of what is anthropology but uh, when we ask uh, even the very highly qualified and educated uh, acad- academicia uh, they uh, blink before saying anything for many of them i think uh, the word itself is new i actually wanted to i actually wanted to narrate one incident which had happened to me in the very recent past uh, i was traveling in a bus in brisbane i was supposed to go to the gaba for that first t20 of that a uh, series between australia and india uh, there's a lady sitting next to me a uh, london born chinese lady married to a brisbane man and uh, that's where you know race mixtures happen it's like you know you are putting in a in a mixie and putting in, and getting the output which is actually a clumsy combination of all those things uh, she is actually a teacher so she was asking what do you do i said i teach anthropology and i also do on a past time field work and then try spending on the field then she had a wide face she asked what it means uh, then uh, and then immediately i tried to open the oxford dictionary for her and then uh, i said that is what is the meaning of the term the study of the human societies and cultures and how they have developed and then say wow it is not simply her for that matter i'll just show something else there one second don't worry i'm not teaching you anything today i generally don't teach anything what is anthropology what do anthropologists do so oh, i'm a bit ignorant but i would say it's to do with digging up bones so some that do wear uh, rocks anthropology Is that is it or something? <laughs> I think so. Is it? No. I I think I know the word. Uh, anthropology is the study of uh, you know dinosaurs and artifacts. Anthropology? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. What do you think about it? What is Very nice. what anthropology? Is? What do you think it is? How would you explain to people what anthropology is? I I, I don't really know really. Okay. Is it? I love I love anthropology. Like the 
remember if other people are saying can't remember. Well, no, I don't know. I have no Magic idea. <laughs> Anyone's gonna guess. Anthropology is uh, it's a kind of study about the old, old and ancient animals. Uh-huh. That's my idea. Is that Am I correct? No. <laughs> so, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, what is this? Anthropology? Yeah. What is it? Uh, the science of uh, the human. If you look at the word anthropology, it's made up of two bits. Anthropology. So don't anthropology worry. From the Greek. If you don't know much, you are on the right path. If you know too much, then there is a difficulty. So though we are here to talk about anthropology in UPSC, I thought I would uh, talk about something else to begin with. Because you see, uh, uh, when, when, when you bounce into people and uh, you know, we have too many questions coming from the crowd. What do you do after engineering, after gold medal, what you're doing, then you say UPSC and then what you do in UPSC. He doesn't know a word there but then he keeps on asking questions. Then you say, I study anthropology, then he would ask, what anthropology, does it give any job, etc. So I thought I would uh, uh, talk about some of the very interesting job openings. Uh, this, you know, generally we do as a part of, you know, regular course, as we do the course, we try to tell the students, see, this is, these are the various things that you can perhaps do. But then I thought for you, I would, uh, uh, begin with this in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the beginning of the course itself. Because you see, uh, how many of us have given the exam earlier? Okay, not many of you, but then uh, this is a very, very bold decision actually. You know. In order to use the word bold itself, my, my throat chokes. Uh, it's a very bold decision that you have taken this particular field and uh, it means that you have written off your youthful ears to somebody else. Yeah, I meant what I say. Because, you know, these are the years when you should be in a, in a very fun-filled life and then you would be scaling heights and that's where you are locking yourself up in the cabins, in the study rooms and then against your you know, endless number of books and thousands of pages, don't know what you study, how to study and then you are trying to motivate yourself every minute and every day. The motivation vanishes every second minute but then you try to bring it back and trying to put it on the paper there. Very difficult task. That's the reason why uh, I don't congratulate people if you have chosen UPSC, I would only say all the best. But then when, uh, when I was talking about choosing a new discipline, you know, not simply anthropology for that matter, maybe you, know, you must have, uh, if at all you had chosen some other X, Y, Z subject, a history, a Paul science, a geography, whatever, even then I would have said congratulations because I am sure most of us did not study these subjects or for that matter did not study anything during our engineering. But then, you know, that calls for a congratulations for that matter. And I was uh, thinking of, you know, introducing to you some of the very interesting job opportunities. And uh, you, would be really, uh, you would be really shocked to see some of these. I mean, especially when you look at countries like the USA, Canada, or even South Africa, if you look at, you have uh, too many opportunities for, for the so-called anthropologists. I would try to show certain things here. It's only to, to expose you to the discipline and uh, to say that everything is good, don't worry. If things go wrong in the life, the discipline would help you otherwise. Look at those blue colored things at the top, innovation and insights analyst, special UI developer insurance, insurance companies are hiring them. And then you have somebody like that, resume writers, you have uh, demand generation officers. I mean, these are some of the titles that you see in various ministries in, the, in South Africa, various uh, you know, organizations in South Africa, the last two here. Actually, those are, uh, those are uh, I mean, that, that's a particular company, that's a particular company uh, working with uh, 
with the specific cases of uh, circumcision and then the government has a program in South Africa that you know, they have to be uh, assisted, they have to be executed under the supervision of a medical officer. So several NGOs are coming forth to popularize this idea because you cannot actually change the cultural aspects but at least you can bring people into the, into the medical surveillance and maybe try to limit the possibility of spreading you know, life-threatening diseases and that's where you know, people like, like anthropologists are actually recruited for, for such kind of posts. It is not simply that actually, if you look at uh, the American Defense Department, there, is, there, there, there used to be, till 2014, there used to be one wing in the Defense Department called you know, Human Terrain Systems. I mean, you can actually browse through back home, I mean, that should also be helpful to, to you elsewhere in your preparation. Uh, what they mean by human terrain systems is these are the social scientists who are uh, recruited into the defense ministry for, for certain kinds of purposes. You see, uh, say if uh, uh, when USA was in war with Iraq, you remember you know, the whole lot of, you know, when they have started from Basra to, 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 to Samarra, the entire route when the, the Allied forces were, were capturing and devastating the entire country and after that you don't see anything but the dust there. When this was happening, uh, they tried to use, even in Afghanistan, they tried to use human terrain systems. These are those experts in culture in the sense that these are the people who have very close understanding about the internal aspects of the culture groups. Uh, see, outwardly, if you see from a distance, you may, you may consider the entire Iraq to be one single lot or maybe the entire Afghanistan to be one single lot. But if you go close, you will understand that there are several groups there which are not really friendly with one another. You can actually see to it that you, know, you can play one group against the other. You need not have to pay, you need not have to pay for the war. You need not you know, lose your soldiers. You only have to instigate instigate the warring factions and then try to supply some kind of arm and ammunition, intelligence, etc. And then you can see, watch them fighting. I said so much. Am I, am I okay? Are you okay with me? I love storytelling. I have a small fellow who insists on storytelling every night. So he sleeps off after my story. You don't sleep in the class. <laughs> Those are human terrain systems. Anthropologists recruited into defense forces, giving cultural secrets to the defense forces. Maybe ultimately the people whom you have studied, they might be killed. They might be sabotaged. See, I'm not here really bothered about the ethical issues. Whether, whether the anthropologist who is actually making his living by studying somebody, when he's handing over those secrets to, to, to the governments, and then because of the secrets that you are sharing with the government, they are actually killing your source material. Actually, when we go into the details of various, co various topics in the syllabus, we will come to all these areas, you know, uh, what are the ethical issues involved, what is the role of anthropologists, what are the uses of anthropology. And when I say that, I'll show you something here. Uh, 2018 main examination, you have the question paper with you. I think you have the question paper with you. Paper one, the very first question there, relevance of anthropology. <clears throat> what I have spoken till now and what I am going to speak in the following statements, maybe in a, another five, ten minutes or so, all that forms part of the answer to this particular question, relevance of anthropology. The only relevance we know as on today is, it may be a subject that gives a score for UPSC. And most of us must have chosen the subject, maybe because of that reason. Not that we love the subject, neither do we love the teacher. It may be because we love those marks out there. Apart from that relevance, we would be looking at various aspects uh, that 
have applications in today's times. Now with that I would try to take you into some of the very interesting aspects. Let me, uh, I don't want to ask any question there. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll begin with this. There's one article review, Harvard uh, article review had published this in 2014, the March issue. You can go back and read, very, very interesting essay there. An anthropologist walks into a bar. No big deal, we walk in every day and you know, we don't want to come out till they throw us out. Actually, this is the essay. And those two are the very name, named anthropologists. They were the people who were writing about the experience of uh, this particular you know, company, which is uh, uh, generally known in, in UK, Finland, kind of you know, European nations, Birko. They were actually narrating this story that you know, Birko, which was actually making huge profits at one point of time, suddenly the profits were, were falling down and the company was sp spending so much on, on, on the business promotion and then launching several new products, trying to attract people. They have, they have you know, serving girls, uh, beautiful serving girls, and then several other such kind of events, but nothing is happening. So it was at that time, it was at that time, they hired a group of anthropologists who spent a lot of time on various branches of Birko across, across Finland and UK especially, and trying to you know, gather a lot of videos, somewhere about you know, 1,500 hours of videos were collected, several photographs, and then several interviews, and trying to see how they are functioning, how the salespeople are functioning, how the serving people, and then what type of crowd is coming, how is the kind of response of the crowd, and everything when it was, all those are randomly collected information, and that information after a couple of months was submitted to the managing board there. And then when they were going into the, all those details, you know, a picture was emerging. Uh, though I'm not narrating the entire thing there, some of the, some of the highlighted issues include, you know, though you were trying to, 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 to uh, recruit the beautiful uh, serving girls there, they were not really motivated to work. They were not really motivated to work. Uh, and uh, one, reason, one reason is the lack of knowledge. They do not know the products of their own company. So if somebody was asking them for a product, maybe you should be in a position to say that, see, there's something that is better off. When there is something better off, maybe in taste, but then which may be slightly lesser in price. Just imagine you're walking into a shop, you are confused what to take, and then the shopkeeper, the, the seller there, would come up and say, though it is on a scale of cost, it may be a lesser one, but qualitatively this is superior, you purchase this. I bet in the eastern, eastern part of the world this doesn't happen. In the eastern part of the world it doesn't happen. You are, the salesperson would always be in, in a rush to sell which is of a higher value rather than promoting the one with the lesser value. If you do the later, I bet the, the buyer would keep on coming back to you because there is the element of trust there. Keeping aside the element of trust because we are going to talk about trust and other things in our cultural anthropology because trust is also something that has to be examined. Some cultures are known for trust and some cultures are known for the other way around. So, you know, they understood that the girls did not have the knowledge of their products and though the company was you know, producing a lot of promotional material, most of the promotional material was there in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in, in the scrap boxes and they were clearly written scrap or waste kind of a thing. You spent thousands of pounds there and then all that is going into the trash bin, you're not properly making use of it. And such kind of a study may not be of a great interest for maybe a technical fellow who is busy producing the best possible wine 
He's not really bothered about you know, how you know, the material is used or how the body language has to be, how the kind of you know, communication has to be with your clientele. When all this report was given, a beautifully prepared report, and they started to experiment, they started to change, and they started to categorize the kind of crowd they were getting. So if it is, a, if it is say, an Israeli crowd, what kind of you know, drinks that have to be served to them, or maybe if it is a French fellow, what kind of drinks that have to be served. Now, there, there's a difference there. When all this was happening, Birko you know, started coming back. This was happening. This is the kind of job. I'm not saying that you'll be restricted to the winery alone, which I'm sure you would want to be. But then, I said something. There are no punishments for smiling. There's a new sub-discipline coming up there, corporate anthropology. There's a book that is for sale, that was 2004 written book, Thomas Davenport. He was actually writing the origin of corporate anthropology, meaning several corporate houses today are providing opportunities of jobs to anthropologists. Organizations like Intel were only one, was only one in the beginnings that started hiring anthropologists. But then these days we have many, many of them including you know, companies like Nokia, when they design the new products, you actually get into the cultural aspects, what are the choice of color in a particular country. Because you see, you cannot launch the same product for every, every market. Different markets have different preferences. Say for example, a very flamboyant uh, fluorescent green or fluorescent pink color phone, I am sure a male would not purchase in western part of the world. But I am sure in the eastern part, uh, no, they, I don't think there would be a major gender bias on that. You wouldn't mind purchasing something like you know, a very fluorescent green or fluorescent yellow and orange. And then maybe perhaps because we see... Uh, you watch movies? You watch movies? Yeah, you should actually, you must. Huh? Emma, you don't watch movies? That's a crime, actually. <laughs> Unpardonable sin. God may forgive every other sin, but not this one. Uh, because you see, without a, tell, without a discussion about a movie, my class is generally incomplete. I love movies so much that I die for them. The, 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 the tingling feeling there. Huh? You really can't say no to it. We can actually look at today a small, a small feature that your, your phones might be having, you know, when you're typing a message. The general tendency we have is that we try to type our um, you know, native, the regional language terms in English. If you try to read them in English, <laughs> because in English we don't have the spellings for all our, for all our you know, native words. So several phone companies are coming up with you know, scripts that are coming up. So when you're typing, the script actually comes up in your, in your native language. And you would have beautiful, you have beautiful records. Companies actually appoint social researchers to know what is the percentage, what is the number of people trying to type in this particular language. And based on the number of you know, users of that language, they try to spend on them. They try to identify what is the powerful market for them. So all this can happen only with the involvement of social scientists. And this is that discipline that creates such kind of opportunities. I'm not getting into very technical kind of applications. If you look at your syllabus, chapter 12, paper 1. You're all fine with me? 
are all fine, you are able to make out what I am speaking in the class, which is a very surprising thing, that in the very first class you are able to understand what I am speaking. My husband could never understand so far in the seven years of marriage. Generally it happens, husbands, husbands never understands, understand what the wife says. Even if you understand, you should pretend as if you haven't, to show that she is an intellectual. <laughs> huh? One thing is, before I go there, true that you have chosen UPSC, which is a very tiresome thing, burdensome thing. I mean, I do not know whether they should go into the video or not. But given a choice, if an young man comes and asks me whether I should go for UPSC or not, I would say no. I would point blank say no. So much of energy that you put in there. You have done your you know, MBBS, Masters in MBBS and, and Medicine and then things like that. And I don't know what you do here studying Akbar and Aurangzeb and I don't know what. Don't know. There is much more beautiful life on the other side. Yeah? And hence, the bottom line is, don't have five-year plans. <laughs> and don't have five-year plans. That this year you will attend the class. After the, after the end of the class, you would start studying. And one year you give the attempt, you clear the prelim. That's the objective there. Clearing prelims one year, clearing mains the next year, and then clearing interview the next year, so already four, five years are gone. Several of the girls whom you wanted to marry have vanished one after the other. <laughs> because you see for the boys, you know, all my heart goes for you, for you also, but... <laughs> they are in a very precarious condition because look at the sex ratio in the census. The sex ratio in the census is so very heartening. My heart bleeds for the boys. <laughs> because, you know, already there's so much of competition out there. And you have wasted your youthful years. When you have sat down to study for UPSC, before UPSC, you are a macho man. And when you started studying, you are you know, tying yourself to that study chair for hours and days and months, maybe years. You did not notice that your tummy is coming out, your eyes are going inside. And one fine day when you think that you have cleared the exam and you have won the world, the moment you came out, it's not simply the service people are looking at you, they are looking at your pot belly there. <laughs> what do you want, a beautiful girl or a pot belly? Choice is yours. Based on that, one has to decide whether UPSC or no UPSC. I'm so sorry, I'm not affecting the business of vision here. <laughs> because I have to tell you the reality also, because when we start studying for the, for the exam, when we start studying for the exam, we are on the cloud, not nine, cloud 11 rather. Just because you have never failed a single exam in your life, you think that UPSC is a cake walk. So many cakes vanish, your walk is still on. And this is, I think, a field that gives you, that may be giving you the very first taste of a failure in your life. The first taste of a failure in your life. Failures are good but not many of them. And a beautiful thing UPSC can teach us is to be absolutely shameless. To be absolutely shameless. Because you know, when you have failed once, you have said to the world, not simply you, your family also had said to the world, no, he didn't clear, she didn't clear. It has happened once and then it has happened twice, it has happened thrice, now it doesn't bother us. <laughs> then finally one fine day when the result comes and you made it through, then people would say, I said that he will be something in UPSC. <laughs> 
you don't know when they said that to you. Because you were already written off, because you locked yourself out of any social contact. Because whichever marriages you are trying to attend, people are saying, attend out of any one. Kind of. So. Sir, if you are joining my course, I mean most of my course was def will definitely be in English, but you know, occasionally I slip into Telugu, so a neighboring fellow of Telugu is very necessary for you. <coughs> so this is actually corporate anthropology. We have n number of, n number of companies that have been investing on anthropological knowledge in order to in order to, 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 to excel in their businesses. So, sir, there are two very significant meanings that I would want to bring here. You have already said that, one of you had already said that. In a common understanding, anthropology studies man across time and space, and it studies cultures of people from prehistoric times to the modern contemporary times. What you study about man, that, that, that depends. When you go into the syllabus, you would see diverse things. Some of the students have this habit of not being very regular to the class. So it may so happen that you know, the day when you were attending a class, you were, you, were actually, you were actually talking about maybe economic anthropology, economic aspects of the societies, and suddenly you were not there for a week or so. Then when you come back, people are talking about chromosomes and aberrations and diseases, etc. And you do not know, you, you start wondering whether I enter the, enter the same class or something else. So what is very, very important is to be regular in the class. As I take you into the course, uh, I should also tell you this. You have a habit of writing? Uh, 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 slow writing or a faster writing? You don't know what is a faster writing. <laughs> I'll teach you in the class what is this faster writing. Uh, though I haven't uh, still started talking about the subject, I should tell you this. I mean, today we are in December, 15th of December, you know? My courses generally run for about uh, 80 to 85 lectures, three hours each, three hours. No, I love three hours. Anything less than three hours is like, you know, watching an incomplete movie. Huh? <laughs> if we make a movie that has to be for three hours, Paisa Vasul kind of a thing, you have spent 250 rupees there for a movie. Anything short there, one song less, one fight less, it doesn't savor us. So, huh? <coughs> And uh, you should be mentally prepared, physically and mentally prepared to see me for a long time. Because you see, uh, uh, if it is a general studies course, you would have new and beautiful faces flashing in the class from time to time. <laughs> this week one phase and the next week the other phase, at least you would have a new movie releasing every Monday. <laughs> but in our case, you know, the same hero, same villain and same whatever. Uh, screenplay, darsikattam, anni manave. Music, dance, anni manave. Ekkadasal, teada leza. So, but then, you know, You'll have to be used to that, huh? the 80, 80 kind of. And then when you come to the class on Monday, if you have decided to be there with me, you should come with a proper notebook huh? to write down a couple of pens. We don't know when one pen stops working. Huh? Then, you should not, then you should not see here and there. A student of mine was writing a poem in Telugu. One of the sentences there is, Yenno agipu in a pennulu. So, don't know. No, when, when one pen stops working, then you should not depend on the others. Be self-reliant there. And then, um, I'll also teach you in the first class how to write down notes. That's very important, actually. Uh, and then I'll also teach you how not to share your notes with others. Because that is a secret. Your notes is a very private secret. It's a love letter between you and me. 
because I know very well when I'm teaching, when I'm dictating in the class, how many mistakes in the spellings would happen there. And you should not be advertising those mistakes to the rest of the globe. Let the mistakes be there between me and you. And uh, because I was a school teacher, I also try to go through your class notes from time to time. And uh, I also give you a lot of homeworks uh, so that uh, so you might be remembering your kindergarten or maybe a primary school where you were asked to write the homeworks and things like that. So I'll take you from there. I was saying that this is a, this is a discipline that studies people from people, cultures, from maybe you know, prehistoric times to the contemporary times. No yawning in the class, please. This is one of the very primitive tribal communities, Zapukai. It is TJ. Zapukai, which is one of the aboriginal tribes out of those 500 major aboriginal tribes of Australia. That was one of the, you know, I had studied two societies last year, uh, in 2018. This was one society, Zapukai. Uh, which is actually a tribe that lives in that part of the country, Keynes, the, of, of Queensland, north eastern tip of the country there. Um, and uh, that's where it is generally said that the humanity had begun. People, are, they have these mythological stories. They say that humanity had begun there. Cultures have originated from there. In fact, you know, when we go into the details of the course, we will, be, we will be exposed to how our scheduled tribes, our Adivasis are treated when compared to the so-called aboriginal populations of that continent country. In fact, you know, occasionally uh, uh, I feel so very good that at least you know, we did not totally wipe out our people. We did not wipe out their cultures. The problem with them is in many places, at least Zapukai knows its origins. There are several other tribes, they do not know their origins, they do not know their past. Just imagine you don't know your past, it is so very uncomfortable, you don't know your origins. Sir, so anthropology is one discipline that studies the origins of every cultural thing. I'll give you an example. Look at your syllabus, maybe perhaps uh, uh, chapter 3, paper 2. Just look for this word origin anywhere. Origin or evolution. You have one? Okay, and then maybe perhaps you go to the other ones like uh, chapter 4, paper 1, chapter 4, paper 1, evolution of political systems, you find it there, evolution, chapter 4, paper 1, chapter 4, paper 1, what syllabus are you looking at? Political ah, political organization and? And go ahead, go ahead, go reading, go reading. Oh. When you are going through these terms there, band, tribe, chiefdoms, etc., these are nothing but how political systems have originated. So origins, evolutions of political systems there. You go to the previous chapter, chapter 3 in paper 1, you have several economic subsistence methods, like you have you know, food gathering, sweetening, pastoralism, and horticulture, you know, you find all those names there. So these are all, this is the evolution of economic subsistences there, evolution, origin of economic subsistences. Go to chapter 5 in paper 1 itself, you find something called origin, or evolution, of religion. What is happening here is, or, or maybe perhaps, <coughs> you look at chapter 1. Uh, there we go to 1.6 and 1.8. At one of them you have evolution of cultures. In 1.8 you are studying evolution of cultures, you know. Starting from maybe in a Paleolithic cultures and then Mesolithic, etc. 
and you and you look at 1.6 you have several pre-human individuals did you notice that people like astralopithecines astralopithecus you have homo erectus you have neanderthal man or whatever it is the bottom line is <coughs> This is a discipline that studies origin, evolution of every damn thing associated with the human. <coughs> so basically, I was talking about Zapukai. These were the people inhabiting that part of the world and who believe that so in the in, in in the class we are going to explore some of them we would be sharing the very contemporary researchers research methodologies look at chapter 8 paper 1 research techniques methodologies you know uh, as you go into, I think, the third part of that chapter, you find uh, a detailing there, various methods of you know, conducting research, case studies, uh, maybe interviews, maybe participant methods, blah, blah, blah. You know, we are going to learn from there how exactly you gather the information, how you conduct the field work. So we are going to explore this particular part. Generally what people think, generally what people think is the life of the, uh, the, the, the primitive people or the aboriginals is a very happy and colorful one. Look at them. I look much fairer there. And uh, they actually wanted me to paint totally but then I said no problem you can use my face for your painting. Interestingly the man there he has the impeccable English uh, and when he explains about his culture many times we will have to turn to the dictionary to find the meanings of the words that he uses. But then the problem is that uh, behind that colorful thing that you see there there is so much of a pain that they experience out of those 500 major tribes of the continent most of them were uprooted by the incoming western people they are actually thrown into the western part of the continent or the central part of the continent which has no resources and the man says that he can still go back to his native but he cannot, he cannot hunt. He was trying to show how I should you know, hunt and then trying to use the boomerang and of course you know, on one occasion it has almost touched him. You know, thankfully he had bowed down and hence nothing had happened to him otherwise uh, you know, I would have carried that curse on my face. When Mowgli uses the boomerang we think that it's child's play but it becomes a very difficult thing when it touches where it should not touch maybe his neck was my target I don't know no. knowingly or unknowingly that happens <coughs> he was actually narrating that you know, it, 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 it is good for my children because they are now exposed to the modern things and they are able to study but then I don't have a life of the previous times. He is actually employed by the government there. The government is using these people to, for the tourism purpose. And several you know, social scientists visit them for the inputs to study how their culture is changing. You know, along with um, uh, and 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 uh, there are several other people who actually try to look at the changing wildlife profile there how wildlife is changing, how to conserve the wildlife. There is one project that is coming up there which, which deals with you know, how indigenous knowledge can help, uh, help curtail the vanishing aspect of, of the coral reefs, the Great Barrier Reef there. 
the Great Barrier Reef, which used to be a continuous strip earlier, now we see that it is only there in patches. It is disappearing. Now the government is trying to use the, the, you know, the knowledge of these people, the intelligence of these people, so traditional knowledge as we call, so that they can once again rejuvenate the, the coral reefs there. So it is, it is not simply a study of, you must understand this, it is not simply a study of the primitive people. It is not really a study of those exotic places. <coughs> that was something like, you know, in the initial times people used to think that, yes, this is the job of, of anthropologists to go into the, the wilderness and maybe try to spend there, try to look at the exotic life of them, but it is no more that. I hope I am giving you... Sir, gentlemen, if anybody is sleeping in your neighborhood, <coughs> please thrash them properly so that, yeah. Let me take you to maybe a, a, a quick look at your syllabus. Then, uh, <coughs> because attending a class on a Saturday, I think it is a problematic thing, you know. After five days of work, five days of classes, Saturday, don't worry. Hand over your soul and mind to me so that I can do whatever with them. You just sit in the class, bring your bodies into the class, the rest of it, you leave it to me. You have four sections in your syllabus. Each paper has two sections. I'll give you a brief idea there because uh, it's very important to know which part of the syllabus is called what. Sometimes students finish their courses, write the exam, they do not know which section deals with what. And uh, I'm not taking up uh, questions such as, you know, uh, in, in this class, I'm not taking uh, questions such as, uh, which are the important questions which have to be attempted, which have not to be attempted, that we will be doing as we get into the course. Because you see, uh, it is not simply that, you now I should tell you what is important, I should also tell you what is not to be studied, or, or to, be, to put properly, what is not to be attempted in the exam. There are certain questions which you are not supposed to lose in the exam. You should and must answer some of them. You should and must leave some of them, unless otherwise there is a knife at your throat and you have nothing else to do. So we will try to identify such, such areas for you. I saw you earlier also. Kada? Um, uh, kada? Uh, I remember. I was thinking from the beginning. Uh, because generally I have that... Uh, uh, memory uh, <coughs> so I I no, can't forget the faces so easily. You did the course? No. You didn't do the course, no? Oh. That was the last decade, I guess. Chapter one in paper one, two, chapter eight. Chapter 1 to chapter 8 is the first section. We call it general anthropology. I could have called it social anthropology, but I cannot call because only from say chapter 2 we have several uh, you know, cultural things. Chapter 1 is the biggest one. Chapter 1 is the biggest one, which is actually a conglomeration of biological, sociological, archaeological and various things. So it is safe to call the first section as general anthropology. And uh, I have to give you a caution. See, if at all you are planning to study by yourself, one tip, because you have spent two hours, one and a half hours here, you should get at least one tip from the class. The tip is, if you want to study by yourself, do not start with chapter 1. Many people who tried doing that, you know, left the discipline. If that is your objective, you do it. Otherwise, you study the first chapter, that too, 1.1 and 1.2, you are not supposed to study in the beginning. 
meaning and scope of anthropology. I told you, you don't know in the first class what is the meaning and scope of this subject. Only after you study the entire discipline you'll understand what the discipline deals with. That is the last class thing. And then from chapter 9, the rest of it is section 2, we call it biological or physical anthropology. chapter 9 to chapter 12. I was trying to show something there in chapter 12 where we diverted. In chapter 12 you have so many applications if you see applied physical anthropology. You have things like you know sports applications, defense applications, DRDO Hyderabad. You have heard of DRDO Hyderabad. Has been doing a lot of anthropological work developing you know instruments devices methodologies training this you know, training the defense personnel to deal with different climatic conditions many times it happens organizations people just in your neighborhood are doing something and you don't know that wonderful things are happening beside you so when we go to the defense applications of anthropology we are going to see what uh, uh, the DRDO has been doing to the soldiers. And when it comes to paper 2 there, um, paper 2 looks to be a cute one, no? small syllabus. Chapter 1 to 5 is section 1. Um, we name it as uh, maybe Indian society. Indian social anthropology. Though we also have, if you look at the first section, sir, chapter 1 to 5 in paper 2, we call it Indian society or Indian social anthropology. In, in chapter 1, you will find there um, things like you know, archaeological and then human evolution, etc. In spite of that, I am calling it Indian social anthropology. And then the rest of it from chapter 6 to 9, it is tribal anthropology, tribal anthropology, tribal anthropology. See throughout the discipline you are going to have examples from simple societies which can be dubbed as tribes but so at most of the places you would be using examples from the simple societies like you know if you are if you are trying to answer a question look at chapter 2 in paper 1. Chapter 2, paper 1, that is maybe, you know, when you go to 2.3. So, Vinti and Thai on the other. Vinti Alagi on to the. At the end of cinema, Snin, when I wink you over the end, Kotagos. I am actually waiting desperately. Winky back in form. I know. When you look at that, if you have to answer questions on marriage, most of the time you try to give examples from tribal societies alone. But then for our, for our comfort of segregating the syllabus and trying to put the things in a proper you know, sub-disciplines, sub we try to use this kind of a segregation, social anthropology, biological anthropology. Look at 1.2 in paper 1. 1.3 in paper 1, 1.3 in paper 1, you have several branches there, four branches are mentioned, socio-cultural anthropology, biological anthropology, linguistic anthropology and archaeological anthropology. These are the four major you know, disciplines that we are going to study. Um, but then archaeological anthropology I did not segregate while, while I am you know, giving you the syllabus breakup. Uh, but then, you know, when we give you the books, etc., um, I give you separately archaeological anthropology. Um, and and I, I hope the, the superficial look is fine. Now, I will tell you the sequence in which we are going to do and uh, the methodology of study in the class. Because after all, for that you are here today. Not to hear about Zapukai or not to hear about, about Birko, though you would want to go there once. But... The thing 
is one can one can begin the discipline from whichever part of it some students walk up to me and say will you first teach the basics and then this this discipline is so very diverse in the content that now we cannot say something as a basic chapter and then i take you to a, to a graduation one it's not that way wherever you start there are new terms new concepts you will have to learn basics for every chapter so it will be like you know chapter wise looking at things rather than but then you see there are certain things that have to be done together there are certain things that have to be done in a sequence that we more or less follow but you know occasionally what happens is some of them can be clearly delineated from the others you can distinguish them from the others so because of that you know there's a flexibility of a beginning from anywhere except from chapter 1 and um, uh, for me actually i do not want to begin with something like you know uh, chapter 2 2.3 rather marriage uh, kinship and family i do not want to start from there but uh, many of you must have chosen the discipline looking at that chapter em cheptaro ento vaga ulatanga alaga ana ala vachi class lo kochindi atla em undadandi akkada i am speaking from my 7 years of experience and 3 years of my courtship so all together 10 years i am i can say that no it is there is nothing there the problem with the eastern world is that we close our fist and create a curiosity a lot of curiosity there are so many barriers you know uh, many times when when you try to ask questions at home your people must have said do not ask questions and all those questions feelings expressions all of them were bottled up inside you do not know where to unleash them because this is closed and there is curiosity than chuttu tirutha untadu there is nothing there once you realize this you would become a yogi <laughs> not not that yogi those are different genre of yogis who have hundreds of i don't know what but when it comes to our lectures from monday we would be beginning from chapter 3 of paper 1 see in some of the batches i start from uh, anthropological thought that is chapter 6 of paper 1 in some of the batches i do it from tribal in some batches i do it from from you know indian society but never from marriage i tell you a secret so this is the beginning of the secrets between you and me secret ante telus kada secret meaning it is between you and me only not that you you know you know put a trumpet and announce it to the world but generally when i say it's a secret that goes first out <laughs> there was a time when i wouldn't touch this topic in the class i hated the topic so much until the time when i got married and i understood the pain in it then after that i started teaching the subject so that this particular chapter so that you know people can decide otherwise <laughs> there are the other genres other kind of people who wait your neighbor your friend to take the chocolate as in mala chocolate list that you do man ma kendu cheppaledu ante nu lopal ki elthichu chocolate cinema knowledge chaala important because you know we may pick up a very uh, scene that you must have ignored conveniently in the in the, in the movie so you will have chair uh, jal jarta chustaru i am such a person if i miss the titles i watch the movie again so o kaadu ad anamata ved alanti olu chaala untai class lo ennu ole esukuntaru meer kashtam and one thing i should tell you is i know that uh, the exam the exam being the toughest one it actually sucks every ounce of your energy every ounce of your energy and uh, caught in disillusionment discouragement and all that stuff 
So my promise to the students would be that you know, the class will be for entertainment. The class would be for entertainment. You enjoy the talks, maybe as a part of it you write, and there's other slightly painful thing of taking a dictation also, slightly other painful things of writing assignments and tests and all, that will be there, that business will be there. But ultimately, you know, you should be yourself in the class, forget what goes on outside, because each one of us have thousands of tentacles, thousands of problems, you know, from those problems we you know, pull ourselves into the class, and then when we are in the class, you will have to be totally with, with the teacher in the class, so that you absorb the most, and you don't miss out anything that we said, see, I'll, I'd say this, nothing in the class will be casually said. You may think that some joke that was given in the class may be an off-bit one, but never that way. Even if there is some kind of a lighter moment, a joke that is given in the class that has some kind of a, of a relevance in the discipline, otherwise it would not come out. And generally I work out more on my jokes for the class rather than the subject. Subject is not the subject. The subject is not but then, you know, I strongly believe in building the concept base of the student. Um, I'll look at some of the questions in the recent uh, exam paper. <coughs> the moment I picked up this came, you know, ways of acquiring mate in tribal societies. You know, don't worry about that. We will see, uh, you know, I, I'm just reading out the questions to have a feel of it because um, I'm sure most of us must have done a lot of research on them you know, before. Uh, so it will be like a re-reading of the thing for you, but some of those souls who did not you know, get the opportunity of, of going through the question paper, it is for them. Look at this uh, chapter, uh, question number two. In paper one, explain the biological changes that made human beings capable of making culture. Actually, this is a very direct question, if at all you have prepared in that particular way. Why I am giving these statements is many times the students were saying that questions have become very indirect, etc. That is good. If at all they are becoming indirect, they are, they are not direct ones. That is actually a challenge. See, if everybody is writing the same kind of a stuff in the exam, you're preparing for the same kind of a question, what fun the examiner would get in evaluation? For examiner also, there, are, there should be interesting things. Your understanding, your command over the concept should come into very open in your answers. And then you have this one, how does customary law function in the tribal society? Discuss different sources of customary law. Then you have what do you understand by national character studies. You have define ethnography and present a brief history of ethnographic studies. This is a question of chapter 8 in paper 1. Give an account of consequences of food production in the Neolithic culture. We have seen 1.6 and 1.8 Neolithic cultures. Critically examine the structure and content of language. Critically examine the structure and content of the language, how they are influenced by culture. There's a, there's a grammatical error in that question. Uh, you can look for this in chapter 7, paper 1. Look at chapter 7, paper 1. This is something to do with the language. It talks about structure of language, social context of language, etc. So two different things are combined in that. Then you have question number four there. How is the case study method helpful in understanding social phenomena? Explain with suitable example. See, generally, a case study method that comes from chapter eight in paper one. Generally, when we study the subject, there's one other way, there is one other thing that uh, no students come up to me and ask. People demand, demand, underline in quotes, people demand to give compilation of case studies. But you see, we try to sprinkle, I'll, I'll tell you the meaning of case study when the chapter comes. Without knowing the meaning of the word, people try using it. Many times it happens. We think that we know the meaning of it and we use it. And like how anthropology, we think that we know the meaning and we use it. 
when we describe, when we discuss the concepts, throughout the discipline we would be sprinkling several examples and references. And those examples and references have to be internalized. And it becomes the duty of the student to start compiling all of them. And that makes a beautiful list of examples, case studies, etc. And uh, from time to time, I keep trying to add newer references, newer researches, so that your answers look fresh to the examiner. That's very important. If the same kind of examples you, know, you, are, you are writing, uh, your neighbor is writing, and your father also had written the same examples. Now, the same thing if the examiner is looking at, I am sure he will not be. So I tell you this. Because this is what lays the foundation of what you are going to learn in the class. I say this and some of my you know, some previous students you know, must have heard this from me. Uh, my dream for the student, and that has to be your dream too, we should have a common dream. Huh? Without a common dream, we, should, we cannot function. The dream is as such, you know, you are writing, see when you are writing an answer, you are writing an answer script for the examiner. That is your advertisement to the, to the examiner. You are trying to present your personality, what you are to the examiner. Your knowledge, your presentation, your language, your communication, everything is mirrored in your answer script. Your answer script must be so very beautifully laid out that you know, once he has finished answering your, you know, and, and, uh, evaluating your paper, he has kept it aside, he has given you marks, he has kept it aside. And once he starts going through the other scripts, evaluating the other scripts, he should actually feel like going back to your answer script, pick it up and award more marks to you. You understand? There should be the tempting, cravingness in, in, the, in the evaluator to give you more. I think once you start dreaming on those lines, working on those lines, I think your job is done. And right from the day one, you focus on internalizing the concepts. Every word that we do in the class, we, sh we should be able to be there on, 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 on the notebook there. So broadly, if I put it here, I would start with, so I'm giving a rough sequence. Mm. A complete schedule will be provided to you in the next week. I mean, a complete schedule of uh, those about 80 classes or so. Uh, <coughs> with some bit of variation will be there based on the participation of the students. See, some, uh, the student uh, will not be the same every day. No? Uh, sometimes you are more energetic, sometimes you are the other way around. And uh, I always say this, uh, teachers are performing artists. It all depends on the audience as how the teacher performs. Manchi chapatl gorte, manchi goste. Chitikale iste atla, ila ante atla. So it all depends on how you, how you respond. So with that leverage, you know, somewhere between 80 and 85 lectures will be there. The entire schedule will be given to you. Uh, for you, I, I have decided to start with the uh, social anthropology of India. So there we would be doing from chapter 3 initially, 3, 4 and 5 we would do, 3, 4 and 5 we would do initially. And uh, see I have something in mind, a particular sequence. But you now looking at the crowd occasionally, what we, you know, if at all the crowd is more agile, can take a lot of uh, difficult blows of the hammer, uh, then I try to pull up certain things like you know archaeology I would pull it to the front um, and maybe perhaps uh, some generally you know I follow a, a kind of a cycle first you know we would do something when, when we are doing one tougher one then I would do a lighter one and then kind of so that there would be some kind of a tough work for you there's a relaxation period and then kind of uh, that's how we try to structure our course to begin with we are doing it from chapter 3 of paper 2. So December 15th, Jan, Feb, March 15th, March end should be, it, should it be done. Mm. Generally it is a five day course but uh, occasionally or on many of the occasions we would uh, summon you on a Saturday and uh, maybe occasionally a Sunday once in a while and your tests will be on the weekends. 
टेस्ट तो लिखना है ना टेस्ट शुड बी ऑन द वीकेंड्स सर डू नॉट हैव दिस फील दैट ना आई वुड फर्स्ट लिसन टू ऑल द लेक्चर्स लेट द टीचर स्टॉप टॉकिंग देन आई वुड डू द स्टडी नो डोंट हैव दैट अलॉन्ग विद द कोर्स यू डू डोंट रियली वरी इट वुड नॉट गेट इन टू योर प्रलिम टाइम ठीक है because your prelim is more important for me than because i want you to take up your main the same year it's not that this year you have taken coaching next year you are writing the main i am against all those formulae and that's how it is any questions from the crowd yeah before that i should tell you um <clears throat> what we deliver in the classes one of course is a detailed conceptual discussion that would happen followed by you know on many of the areas you will get dictations and see generally what happens is uh, not all areas i would dictate it depends on what i feel is more important for the current year the entire syllabus we would discuss but formally dictating is mostly based on what is so why i am saying this is if you have caught hold of some notes of x y z senior that will be very different from what you are going to do uh you you should not be bringing that notes madam yahan par dictation likhaya mujhe ye nahi i mean kind of a thing that is a different one bygone is bygone somehow you know the ramayana is the same i don't feel like narrating the same thing you know in the same way there has to be some kind of a difference there uh so one would be your conceptual discussion second will be your dictations and third will be your printed note that we are going to give you and fourth will be your assignments fifth will be your test the panchashila as we call rules have to be properly followed people come up and ask me 350 360 is my target can i do it i don't know who you are but i may i can say this that you know if you follow the rules then i will be able to help you out see to it that you finish your assignments on time tests on time and uh, uh, by the time of april you can close this down put it aside you focus on your pre and then doubts can be flexibly raised in the class because you are in the live class here but if you feel shy to ask questions many of the boys are shy in asking questions so you can actually leave a note there on my desk before i come so that the answer can be picked up you can as well put it on the portal i guess i don't know i should have to talk to them uh, so on the portal maybe you can raise your doubts uh anyways for that matter after the class i don't want the student to wait for a long time to to clarify the doubts sometimes what happens is uh, and based on the relationship between you and me if i share my number with you you can perhaps you know start sending your uh questions also on my number number should be kept with yourself theek okay? hai that's the secret again those are the things panchashil your conceptual based discussions your dictations your printed note your assignments and finally the tests tell me what you expected before coming to the class and what you got mem lekad go this kelda anukuntam me ha AC challaga ostundi is not my department ye und blanket ga appukovali hi ga ah blanket lapena paduguntam class lo students have the luxury of sleeping comfortably in the class and apart from the ac what else books i will tell you we will minimize see it's something like this i'm team number of books i can i can give list of books we give uh but not to purchase take for example one of the books that you are going to get uh, uh, will be this i mean the old question papers etc wherein i try to give a short list of books there and in the class we will be talking about many more books and uh, even if you haven't studied those books you should know the list of books 
one, to have a better writing in the exam, because at many places you'll have to quote the books. So in order to quote the books, you should know the titles and the writers. Secondly, in order to uh, flaunt in front of your friends, that see, I know these, because when we are referring, when we are talking about a book in the class, we will also tell what is there in the book. So you can pose as if you have read the book. This is all a psychological game that we play in the exam. When you show off that, see, I know this, I know this, the other's heart would sink. So I will tell you the very minimum kind of books, maybe everything put together about five books and uh, you're not reading any of the books cover to cover, you generally don't do that, right? you generally don't do that even otherwise. So, or See, as long as you are here in the class, we try to give you an idea from maybe the last six months or so, what kind of articles have appeared and then uh, where exactly in which component we should be adding kind of a thing. Maybe from there you can take it up and once the course is done, you can start doing by yourself because everything that might appear in the newspaper, see, when a news comes that some dig, they have discovered an archaeological dig and they found some kind of a human-like individual there, maybe possibly he was a Neanderthal man kind of, I mean, the recent one. Not every such kind of news can be put in your answer. So there has to be some kind of a uh, verification to be done. How you verify, we will say, but you know, to be brief, what I can say is, as long as you are here, we would be providing you with some article references, which from where you can draw some kind of, you know, current related things. Um, with the kind of practice that you get in the class, maybe after the course also, you would continue to do that. Anything else? So you're all writing this year? Be clear, you are writing this year or next year? year? How many of us are writing this year? Uh, any souls left out? You are not writing this year? 2019, huh? Any other question there? Hanji, please. Hmm. Hmm. Don't worry, bold on the. You can actually write uh, a 30 marks answer on Homo erectus culture. It's only that for your comfort we try to segregate, shorten and crush it so that you get in the short form, but you will be able to get. See, it's something like this. As far as your content is concerned, you don't really bother. Uh, at one point of time in the future, you would cry out on the huge amount of content that is there with you. Okay. Uh, your focus should be on understanding what we are talking in the class, getting a very clear conceptual understanding, and then from time to time, I, I did not tell you this, from time to time I will be giving you lists of questions that you will have to focus on. So you would be starting to write structures of those questions, you would start practicing back home those answers, etc. If you think that at any point of time there is a shortage of content, you come back, I would help out. Don't worry. And Anji, sir. According to you, what would be the best answer for this question? Why answer for this question? I mean, you have written mine this time? No. Telugu lo annattu, adhi le, didi le, dedo annattu. I mean, we'll take time. We'll take time because we will have to further study and then take it. There's still time for that. And somebody here.
yes completely i we would do and then uh, it's like uh, hmm, i i anyway would be giving you the sequence of things to do where several of the physical things have to be combined with the social anthropology we would be combining them there like you know ecological anthropology there is one chapter in i think 9.7 paper 1 ecological anthropology we will be clubbing with uh, one particular school of thought in chapter 6 paper 1 in chapter 6 paper 1 there is something called neo evolution when we do neo evolution we would be clubbing that with ecological anthropology in physical anthropology 9.7 i actually did not deal in today's lecture um, regarding you know which are all the things that have to be kept in one bracket i mean when i am doing one chapter a similar one from elsewhere has to be done along with that all those things i would be doing in your first class i will tell you which chapters i will be clubbing etc and me ante call cheppandi maybe about a 90% we do in the class okay about a 10% of it maybe i we give in the form of handouts left me double waste kada i understand the importance of every penny that you pay which must have come from the hard work of your parent and remember any day when you don't feel like coming to the class you remember how much you have paid for that day suppose 80 classes how whatever amount that you have paid per class you must have paid some amount remember that amount and i don't think you would want to sit at home and you will have paisa also don't worry you will have information you will have knowledge you will have presentation you will have entertainment you will have everything the three r movie except that you want to write ne i don't know and if you are in the offline you are offline if you are in the online you are online majju rakamga undaddu how many days you might be see it's it's like you know in a very special case maybe two or three days i am absent we generally provide an opportunity to watch in the office so we would see and hmm kaldama undama సబ్ కబుల్ చెప్పను ఎప్పుడు ఎప్పుడు వెళ్ళిపోవాలా అని చూస్తున్నారు కదా ఆ ఐ నో ఓన్లీ టుడే మేబీ ఫ్రమ్ మండే ఐ లాస్ దెమ్ టు రిమూవ్ దిస్ ఫ్రమ్ ద క్లాస్ ఐ హెడ్ దట్ ఇన్ ద క్లాస్ పీపుల్ వుడ్ బి లుకింగ్ ఎట్ దట్ మోర్ దెన్ లుకింగ్ ఎట్ మీ సో ఐ విల్ ఆస్ దెమ్ టు షిఫ్ట్ ఇట్ టు దట్ సైడ్ దట్స్ వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ and generally i i ask them to close the door from outside and there is only one entrance and exit here kudithlo padda elakalaga meaning telusu kada so have a great time hoping to see you all on monday have a good time god bless you